this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're doing a three-way smackdown between three Windows 8 Slate style. Uh, they have they have little add-ons that, that make them into sort of like notebooks, but basically they start life out as Slate style Windows 8 tablets with Core i5 Intel processors. Priced pretty close together, we have the Acer Iconia W700, we have the Surface Pro by Microsoft, and the Samsung Smart PC Pro, the Ativ 700T. We're going to compare them now to help you decide which one might be for you. So for our triple play lineup in this comparison smackdown, on the far left we have the Samsung Ativ Smart PC Pro 700T. You're, you're paying a little extra for all the words in the name there, just kidding. That one is $1,200. In the center, we have the Microsoft Surface Pro. That is $999 with 128 gig SSD. And all of these, we're going to go by pricing for the 128 gig SSD to make them comparable. And on the far right, we have the Acer Iconia W700, which is a pure slate design, obviously, and it doesn't have any kind of keyboard appendage like the other two. All of these have an Intel Core i5-3317U ULV CPU, that's an Ultrabook CPU found on a whole lot of Ultrabooks, 4 gigs of DDR3 RAM, 128 gig SSD, fast SSD in all of the cases here, dual band Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and full HD 1080p touch screens. Here's an important differentiator. Right now, for those of you who are digital artists, don't consider the Acer W700. Not that it is a lovely tablet, because it is, especially for the price, but it does not have an active digitizer. There's no Wacom pen, there's no Entrig pen, there is no digital pen option whatsoever for that. With both the Surface Pro and the Samsung Ativ 700T, you get a Wacom digitizer and a Wacom digital pen. Much more precise, great for note-taking, great for drawing, all that kind of stuff. While we're talking about Wacom inside, Samsung has really been good with their last couple of tablets shipping WinTab drivers in the box. For those of you who need pressure sensitivity in Photoshop today, right now, or Paint Tool SAI or Corel Painter, you've got that with the Samsung Ativ 700T. Microsoft and Adobe and Wacom have said we're going to have to wait a bit for those WinTab drivers to come out for pressure sensitivity in those applications. So, something to keep in mind. However, they are coming for the Surface Pro. Both of these two guys with the Wacom Digitizer will work with apps that use the modern Pen API, something a little bit newer that's come out for Windows apps. That means ArtRage works fine, Sketchbook Pro works fine with pressure sensitivity right now, and in all cases the pen just does work. You can use it to draw to sketch the paint. This is relevant only for those who need pressure sensitivity in certain applications. Now when we talk about costs, you get a lot of bang for your buck with add-on accessories with the Acer Iconia W700. You get this Bluetooth keyboard. Now Acer has just started showing some that looks sort of like one of those clip-on Bluetooth keyboards, large and flat. We haven't seen that in person yet. Right now the bundles in the U.S. are still with this Bluetooth keyboard, which is great for typing, but it's the second thing you have to carry around. There's nothing that clips on. But you get this in the box for your $9.99. You also get the goofiest, inclusiest, but functional stand and port replicator, this guy here. And you can watch our full review to, to learn everything about this, but this guy replicates and adds three USB ports here, which is quite handy, and it functions as a stand in both portrait and landscape modes. It may not be pretty, but it gets the job done. With the Surface Pro for $9.99, you get just the tablet and the digital pen. You don't get any of the keyboards. You're going to have to spend $120 to get the touch cover, which is what we're showing here right now, which is sort of like the fabric membrane style keyboard or if you want to spend $130 you can get the type cover which has moving clicky keys. Both of these clip on securely via magnets and act as covers. So you pick it up, you close it, it automatically puts the device to sleep. Very thin, clever design but some more money you're spending there so that brings your $9.99 product up to $1,020 or $1,030. And with the Samsung you get that keyboard dock in the box for $1,200. There is no option to buy it without the dock. So while we're having that keyboard discussion and the Pure Slate, your Acer Iconia W700 there versus these guys have some level of keyboard integration. Obviously the Samsung has the highest level of keyboard integration and a keyboard that's much more like what you would find in a small Ultrabook. So for those of you who do a lot of typing also, that's a pretty important point to be made here. You get a nice island style keyboard, a reasonable trackpad over here, a wrist rest area, feels sort of like a notebook. The bottom only weighs 1.6 pounds, the tablet weighs just under 2 pounds, so it's going to be a little bit top heavy, and we have noted a problem, so of other folks with, you can hear that happening right there, the keyboard dock doesn't 
tend to stay electrically connected to the tablet, but Samsung, I think, is working on that and should have docks that work a little bit better soon. When you close this guy up, it looks just like a clamshell computer. Not a very exciting one, granted, just your basic black plastic. But it has a whole feel and that kind of ruggedness. You know, Samsung, they may use plastic, but it's pretty strong stuff. There's some flex there, but nothing to worry about. So you get pretty much a notebook-like form factor. With Surface, you have the built-in kickstand, and it's 10.6 inches versus the other two that are 11.6. So it's more portable in terms of its footprint, but everything is a little bit smaller on screen. And that's going to be a matter of personal preference. Some folks just want the smallest and most powerful that they can get, which would be certainly the Surface Pro. Others you might want a little bit more screen real estate. So matter of personal preference and needs there. But in terms of design, the flip covers, you've, you've watched our video review, you know how it works. Very thin, very clever how it works. Functions to protect. You've got a kickstand back here. Not an adjustable angle, though. There is only one position. It's a pretty good compromise in terms of the position that they chose. But with the Samsung, you can use it more like a laptop. Except the one thing about the Samsung is it doesn't open very far back for some reason. So for those of you who need to kick back, you see you're not, we're not really getting any more backward tilt than we are on our surface here. In fact, a little bit less. So... And while we're talking about plasticiness, which the Samsung is the king of, it's kind of plasticky black stuff right here, both the Acer and the Surface Pro go for that high line feel. Metal casings, nice Gorilla Glass on the displays, good looking, they look like an expensive piece of kit, and they are. You can see we have our Surface Pro pen that clips on magnetically over here to the charging port. We'll take that off for a moment, but good looking modern industrial design, magnesium alloy casing on it, sturdy, strong. They're all about a half an inch thick, so you're looking at the same thickness. And in terms of weight, you're also looking about the same thing. Just under two pounds for the Samsung alone, not counting the keyboard dock. Two pounds even, and two pounds and one ounce for the Acer. So weight-wise, you're looking at the same thing. And while we're talking about that pen, here's the pen that comes with Surface Pro. It looks like a big, nice, normal mechanical pencil, nice to hold. Eraser function on the top end here, a single click button over here. And the one that comes with the Samsung Series 7 Slate is much smaller because they actually gave you a silo to put it in, which is nice, but that means there's not enough room for a big pen like this. So you do get one little clicky button there, no eraser function on the top, but you can buy other Wacom pens if you want to, or you may have them if you're already an artist who's into that, so you can get bigger pens this size here, but not in the box. And lastly, as we take a look around the Acer, Nice-looking machine, brushed aluminum, unibody casing, straight-sided. So this one may feel a little less comfortable to hold, honestly, given how wide it is. Also, just like the Samsung, these 11.6-inch guys, they are kind of wide. But the straight sides as well and the feeling of metal, well, it's not as hand-friendly. That said, there is a chamfer here, a curve, so it's a little softened in the back. That's not going to dig in. It's only the front end that's a bit abrupt. But nice quality-looking piece of metal here, solid build can't flex this thing. Good stuff. Now when it comes to performance, you're looking at the same hardware inside, identical. We could sit here and watch how browser pages load, how streaming video plays, but we're not going to bore you with that because it's really the same on all of these. These are all capable of light 3D Windows 7 gaming. We've done things like played Skyrim and Civ 5, and you can see that in some of our video reviews of these products. In terms of benchmark numbers, our Samsung scored a little bit lower though. I don't really know why that is given the same internals. It may have to do with the graphics driver or something like that, but 4600s, 4600s, and lower 4000s for our Samsung, but I have seen some other folks manage to get 4400 and PC Mark 7, still lower than these two, but not as much lower, so we'll just chalk it up to our review, our review unit being a little bit quacky. They all have dual band Wi-Fi 802.11bgn and Bluetooth 4.0. The Samsung is the only one that uses Intel brand Wi-Fi, and that gets you Intel Wi-Di wireless display. For those of you who use Wi-Di at home, you'll probably be happy to hear about that. They all have video outports. Now, Surface has a mini display port, and you can get adapters to adapt that to HDMI or to VGA, and it allows you to use higher resolution monitors, higher than 1080p, which is nice and versatile for those of you who want to use bigger monitors. It could be annoying for those of you who just have to go out and get a dongle to just use plain old HDMI, though. The other two have micro HDMI ports. They all have one USB 3.0 port. These Slate tablets really don't have room for much more in the way of ports. With the Samsung, if you put the keyboard dock on, you get two USB 2.0 ports in addition, which is nice to have. 
all have 3.5 millimeter combo audio for microphone, headphone, stereo speakers, that kind of thing. For US, none of these has a 3G, 4G option, so you're looking at using your Wi-Fi or the mobile hotspot feature on your smartphone or a MiFi if you need data connectivity when you're not near a Wi-Fi hotspot. In terms of battery life, the Acer Iconia W700 is the winner here. It lasts the longest of these three on a charge. We've been managing six and a half, sometimes seven hours of actual use time on a charge with brightness for all of these guys set at 50%. Auto brightness feature turned on, Wi-Fi on and in use, and a mix of productivity and some streaming video playback time. Just kind of replicating what you do during the day. Emails running in the background, social networking, that kind of stuff. Surface. Smallest guy, also the lowest battery life, four and a half to five hours is what we've been seeing on it. And the Samsung is right there in the middle around five and a half to six hours on a charge. Important to note that the Samsung does not have an auxiliary battery in the keyboard dock. Some other manufacturers do that with their keyboard dock and their transformer style tablets, but nope, nothing there inside the Samsung dock. In terms of display quality, they're all lovely. Again, the Surface has the smaller one, so you get slightly higher pixels per inch because they're scrunched in, and they're all running at the same 1920 by 1080 resolution. They all have wide viewing angles. I would give the absolute tops for viewing angles to the IPS display that's used on the W700. It's a little bit less color accurate. You can probably see that in our video right here, that this one's a little bit cooler, a little towards the, the bluish side rather than the slightly lavender tone we should see here. But that is something that you can change with calibration. They're all reasonably bright displays, approaching 400 nits of brightness. They all have 10 points of capacitive multi-touch, and they're responsive to touch. Honestly, no matter which one you get, you're going to enjoy watching movies and looking at photos on these guys. In terms of glare, the Surface Pro has the least glare, but they all have glossy displays and they all have plenty of glare, but the bonded Gorilla Glass display on the Surface is pretty effective at cutting back some of that. The Samsung is the most glary. These all have 720p front webcams that work just fine for Skype, for video chat in general. They all actually do reasonably about the same job of getting not too much noise, not too much blockiness, decent color saturation, you know, your typical webcam stuff, nothing to write home about. Surface is the loser with the back camera, also has that same 720p back camera, like really, I guess I just think you're going to use it for Skype and nothing else. The other two have 5 megapixel rear cameras, and you know, they're not even quite as good as the 5 megapixel camera on your halfway decent Android smartphone, or your iPhone, whatever it is that you have but certainly they're more capable than 720p. Now, these guys being kind of oblong and two pounds, I don't know how much you're going to use that to take really fancy videos and photos, but there it is. Surface would be the lamest one when it comes to that. These all run Windows 8 64-bit. They're full computers. They can run Windows 7 apps. They can run your iTunes, your Photoshop, all of that kind of stuff as well as the Metro UI here with the live tiles. You get Windows 8 Pro by default with the Surface Pro since Microsoft makes that operating system. They can afford to throw in the higher end version versus just straight Windows 8 on the other two, though there are options to get those with Windows 8 Pro if you need Pro. That gets you things like BitLock or encryption, uh, the ability to join, win to join Windows domains for those of you who are wondering what the difference is. In terms of heat and fan noise, they're actually all pretty much similar. If you're doing productivity work, if you're just doing drawing or note-taking, fans are silent or nearly silent. And if you're doing something like playing, well, Skyrim, then the fans are going to be blowing pretty loud, the same as on any laptop computer or Ultrabook computer. In terms of the heat that you feel transferred to you on the back, none of them gets burning hot. The Samsung being plastic, you think it might get a little less hot, but you feel it just as much as you actually do on the two metal back guys, but none of these exceeds human body temperature, which means they don't feel too hot to the touch. So much as these three guys are similar, there's enough of a difference that I think it's going to help some of you at least eliminate which which ones are and aren't for you here. I would say that the Acer Iconia W700 is the big bang for the buck. For $999, you get a really nice tablet with a metal back, same hardware and features as the other guys. You get this external keyboard over here, which is a pretty good keyboard to type on. You actually get the dock in the box and also a kind of, well, nasty vinyl -y carry case for the tablet, but it does work. It carries the tablet just fine. So there's a lot of value here, and this is for folks who don't really want a keyboard that attaches directly to it. So you, it's a little bit more cumbersome if you have to carry these around separately. If most of the time you just want to carry this tablet though, then it's pretty easy. 
Surface Pro would be for those who really want a high quality fit and finish product and who want something that's very compact at 10.6 inches. It is the smallest and the keyboard options are cleverly designed to not take up much more space, quite thin, very light. These things are 7.5 ounces, these keyboard covers, and acts as a cover for your display at the same time. So with the type keyboard, this one right here with the clicky keys, is actually reasonably good for typing. I would still say it's not as good as the Samsung solution, but you can you can do some serious writing with this guy. But really, mostly, this is the one for portability and for those of you who want high quality fit and finish, and also a very clean operating system. It's basically, think of it as the Microsoft Signature Edition. Since Microsoft makes this, there's no manufacturer bloatware on here. There's nothing else. It's just your straight Windows installation. Very clean. And lastly, the Samsung is for those of you who like the transformer style with the, the detachable keyboard dock kind of thing going on. It feels more laptop-like, obviously, than the other two. Uh, it's not too heavy to carry around, 3.6 pounds total if, you, if you're carrying around both the keyboard dock and the tablet itself. So for those of you who really need something that bridges the notebook experience more than transformers like the Samsung are going to make more sense. And lastly, for you graphic artists, one more time, the W700, not for you, no digital pen. Likewise, you note takers who want a digital pen to take notes with, no active digitizer here. So, wake them in the Samsung and the Surface Pro. To learn even more about these products, make sure to watch our in-depth video reviews. We have video reviews of all of these on our YouTube channel, and you can read our full written reviews on mobiletechreview.com. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.